Making maps for printing or posting on social media is fun, but let's spice things up a little bit and take one of my old static maps and turn it into an interactive and performant web map. Hey folks, welcome back to the Carter Redux channel. My name is Tommy. And in this video, I'm gonna turn my Bryce Canyon map over here into a cached base map. First things first though, I wanna host this base map on ArcGIS Online and have the option to combine it with other Esri base maps. So that means, you guessed it, we're gonna be using Web Mercator. Now this map should look familiar, and if not, and if this is your first time here, welcome. I appreciate you stopping by. Here's a link for the uh, video where I walk through creating this map from scratch. Let's move over to Pro. So the first thing that we need to do is come over to our map frame properties, and we're going to set the background color to a very specific RGB value, 51, 52, 53, for reasons I'm not gonna get into right now. Just trust me, we'll get it in a future video. And for our coordinate systems, again, because we're using the Web Mercator tiling scheme, we wanna make sure that we specify the Web Mercator coordinate reference system. Next thing is we need to make sure that we've got a polygon that's going to constrain cache to only generate tiles where we absolutely need them and where we want them. And just so happen to have one of those right over here. That's a pretty pink. So that polygon is gonna be our area of interest input for the next tool that we're gonna talk about. And as a matter of fact, I think we're about ready to cook some cache. So let's jump over to our geoprocessing pane. And first up is the Manage Tile Cache Geoprocessing Tool. Now we talked a lot about the geoprocessing tools in the previous videos, but let's actually talk through some of these parameters and how we use this tool. So first off, we have to have a place for our cache data set to live. And that's where this cache location is. We'll give it a name. For the Manage mode, we've got a couple of options stick with recreate all tiles. It's very rare that you'll need to use any of these other options. And honestly, recreate empty tiles, while it sounds interesting, is way more trouble than it's worth. So recreate all tiles, that's your friend. Now the input data source, this can be a couple different things. It could be a mosaic data set, a raster data set, or it can be a map, which is exactly what we have it set to right here. Input tiling scheme by default is set to ArcGIS Online. Now I took that base tiling scheme and I wanna use a custom one and I did that because I want to specify a tile format. And in this case for this map, I wanna use mixed JPEG 75. I'll max out the scales. And then for the levels of detail, well, that actually brings up a good point. What scale do we actually need to generate cash down to? What's appropriate? Well, one quick way that we can do this is just right click on that layer. If you missed that, right click, zoom to source resolution. That's gonna take us to this one to 4,000 scale. And if we look at our tiling scheme or our levels of detail you know, that are down here, once again, we can just specify that by going to load then ArcGIS Online, and that'll load all of the tiling scheme scales for Web Mercator. We'll notice that the closest scale is this one to 4,514. It kind of zooms us in just a little bit, but that's okay. We're not going too much further beyond the native resolution of our data sets. So that's cool. So let's zoom back out. And for our cache scales, we're gonna be caching from one to 592 million, all the way down to one to 4,000. Now all these are usually checked by default and you can just shift select and then hit the space bar to uncheck them all in one shot. So that's a pretty cool time saving technique. And then for our area of interest, I'm just gonna pull down the drop down here for our layers. I'm gonna specify that polygon that's right over here. Now this is special because this is gonna tell the tool to only generate tiles that are inside this polygon. Last and certainly not least, we're gonna use the parallel processing factor. We're gonna turn that up to 100%. So we leverage all possible CPUs for this cache job. Back over here, we'll hit run. And then through the magic of technology, we're gonna speed this part up. It usually takes about a minute. And we're done. How do we do? One minute, 17 seconds, not too shabby. Now let's take a look at what we just created on disk. So let's go to our cache directory. We see this raster data set now for our Bryce Canyon base map. Now, if we look at that on disk, it's gonna look a little different, right? This just looks like a single raster data set. But if we look in here, it's got a bunch of files, a bunch of folders. And if we dig into these folders, we got these bundle files where the, the JPEGs and PNGs are being stored. So now that we've got a cache data set, the next step is to use the export tile cache geoprocessing tool. So we'll browse to our cache directory, we'll locate our cache data set, and this time we're gonna use all the scales, right? We're gonna let it max out, and we're gonna reuse that 
same polygon that we did before. Now, additionally, you've got some options when we export the cache. We can use the tile cache, but that would essentially just copy what's already on disk. You've got the old version of the tile package, the TPK, or you can use TPKX. Because we're going to ArcGIS Online, I'd recommend TPKX. This is the new version of the tile package. It's also got some, some secret sauce under the hood that's gonna help improve display of the, of the base map in certain scenarios. So we're gonna turn that on. We're gonna pick our output location. And once again, we can specify the parallel processing factor. So let's kick that off. And it's done. Let's see how long that took. So that took a whopping 21 seconds. So we've got our tile package right over here. And once again, let's see what that looks like on disk. Let's go back up, exports. We've got a 13 and a half megabyte tile package. Now, before we publish this to ArcGIS Online, I just want to bring this into ArcGIS Pro just to kind of check things out. Add our tile package to the map. There we go. You know what? Just to mimic the behavior of zooming and snapping to the cache scales, I'm going to check this box. This is a new feature that was added recently in the ArcGIS Pro, and I really like it. It's going to lock to those specific scales that we've got in our pick list here. So 36,000, 18, 9, 4. Now you'll notice the map is still displaying. Remember that tile package secret sauce I was talking about? Well, it's something called tile resampling. Even though I only generated cache down to this scale, my map is gonna continue to draw and render because the tile package is telling the machine to resample the last set of tiles that it had. So I'm actually seeing just pixelated versions of that one to 4,000 cache scale which is really cool. Now the awesome thing about that, it's exactly how it's gonna behave when we push this up to ArcGIS Online in a web map. So let's do that. We are going to flip over to the Share Package Geoprocessing Tool. Browse to our tile package, specify some information. We'll also, because I'm signed into my organization, it knows where it's gonna go and I can pick a content directory for that to live. Additionally, I've got the option to publish the web layer. So you actually upload two things. You upload the tile package and you have an option to deploy the actual tile layer. So we'll check that and we'll click run. Now while that's running, let's head over to my ArcGIS online org to see what's happening over there. So we'll just give that a second to upload the tile package and that's uploaded, so we'll just flip this and now we actually see we've got two items in my content directory i have my tile package the tpkx that we created and it's automatically gone ahead and published and created that endpoint where tiles will be streamed from this is just a file it's just a zip file right of all the stuff that goes into the the cache data set this however is the actual hosted tile layer so let's take a look at that item and what we really want to look at is the current tile deployment status. So we can click on show current tile details. We can see that the tiles appear to be published and ready to go. So let's go back and add it to a web map. Just confirm that the thing is behaving the way we want it to. So here it is combined with a lovely terrain with labels base map. It's looking really cool. I like that a lot. Now let's just test out that resampling functionality too. So if I get the visibility range, I'm at one to 9,000, 4,000. Check that out. Same behavior. I only generated cache down to one to 4,000, yet I'm able to cheat still display a map all the way down to the largest level of detail that the base map is supporting, which is something crazy like, what is this? One to 70? Pretty wild. All right, folks, well, that's it. It's published, cached, done. Really cool. Now we've got a functioning interactive web map that's gonna perform well. And you know what? I think there's some more things that we can do to this base map to kind of really spice it up a little bit. So stay tuned for the next round of videos 
in this Shaded Relief base map series. All right, folks, take care. I'll see you soon. See ya.